Hi guys, welcome to the tetrahedron chemistry classes. So in today's class we will see uh, the methyl cyclohexane that is mono substituted cyclohexane systems and their conformation. So for this you should know, uh, see this was your uh, simple chair conformer. So uh, you can focus on this one, you see uh, this the red one is the axial hydrogen and this carbon number 2 the axial hydrogen is down the third one so there would be interaction between this hydrogen and this hydrogen so counting 1 2 3 this is called 1 3 diaxial interactions and 1 3 diaxial interactions are responsible for the instability of the system if I substitute these hydrogens or any one of the hydrogen with the bulky groups so one can ask uh, this hydrogen this equatorial and this equatorial hydrogen can also interact so their interaction would be less because they are very very far from each other so we uh, do not take account of uh, these uh, equatorial interactions but one two three this is called one three diaxial interactions and these diaxial interactions uh, becomes more important when we substituted hydrogen with the bulky group so there would be repulsion see you know these are the hydrogens they are smaller in size so their repulsion would be the less one now what i can do i can substitute uh, this hydrogen with the bulky group just like this you see in this way right here you see this is the chair actually and this is your bulky methyl group now these methyl this methyl group and this hydrogen that is one two three you can go in this way so one three diaxial interaction now one two three opposite direct in opposite uh, in the uh, opposite direction there is also one three diaxial interaction so there are two one three diaxial interactions now you can see uh, this is the model uh, bigger in size but if you consider in the molecular label so this would be quite small and this methyl group will hit this hydrogen as well as this hydrogen so there would be one three diaxial interactions which causes the uh, which causes the instability of the molecule so to overcome this instability what this uh, chair conformer did they uh, this chair conformer flip into the another chair remember this is the axial methyl group but it will they flip then uh, if it will flip then it will become the equatorial so it is very important to note uh, that the fl during flipping uh, your equatorial become axial axial become equatorial if you haven't seen my the previous video on axial and equatorial relation then here is the link you can go through the conformations of the cyclohexanes right so it will flip how you can see this one right and this would go down so this is your another chair right so and you can clearly see in this chair conformer this is this equatorial methyl group as is going away so there is no repulsion or there is no interaction with the methyl group and the hydrogen group so this adapt this conformation right and uh, you should know uh, this thing this if the mono substitute uh, if the mono substituents are there in the cyclohexane systems then cyclohexane mono substituted cyclohexanes in equatorial conformer it spends its 95 percent of time right so that means this is the most stable one that's why this mono substituted equatorial mono substituted is spending its more time in this particular form right while in the previous one if i flip it again just like this it is coming down so there are diaxial interactions which causes instability we can easily uh, we can easily calculate the energy of these uh, conformers so uh, now we'll see on the paper how we can calculate the energy of this one but the important point is the uh, is that you should remember that there is if there is substitution or mono substitution then equatorial uh, substituents uh, substituents would go in the equatorial position and this conformer would be the most stable one so now we will see uh, how we can draw these uh, mono substituted cyclohexane on the board. So you can see here this is the example say 
this is your cyclohexane and for example this is your methyl group now you have to draw the chair conformer uh, the most stable chair conformer of this one so we'll, I will not go directly to the most stable one but uh, initially we will see how we can draw the chair conformer for this one or you can see say you can number it in this way carbon number 1, carbon number 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 just like this so uh, you quickly draw a chair for this how a parallel line and again a parallel line to this one this is the parallel line and this is also a parallel line attached to this one parallel line and attached to this one a parallel line so these two lines are parallel these two lines are parallel these two lines are parallel if you number it in this way say this is carbon number one this is two this is three this is four this is five and this is the carbon number six see one is hardly in your methyl group and this is a solid wedge that means it is a beta methyl it is a beta methyl remember it is a solid wedge if it is a dashed or the hashed wedge then it would be the alpha one so that means it is up so you can put this methyl up just like this ch3 right and then your equatorial hydrogen below fine and then alternatively you can go for your hydrogens which are the part of the system so uh, this is your hydrogen again you see and this is the hydrogen again now coming to this one axial would be down and equatorial would be up going to this one axial would up and equatorial would be down coming to this one axial would be down and equatorial to up right so uh, while drawing the hydrogens of these it is again very very important to note that say this is your uh, say for example uh, this is your hydrogen equatorial hydrogen so it should be parallel to this line right similarly this is your equatorial hydrogen then this should be parallel to this line and this is the equatorial hydrogen this this should be parallel to this line however in this particular drawing it is not very clearly visible but you should keep in mind that this equatorial hydrogens would be parallel to the line which are falling just opposite to them right so this is how you can draw this one but remember this is what axial methyl group now if you see uh, this is now uh, 1 2 3 so this is your axial methyl group right and again one, sorry this is a, uh, your axial hydrogen now 1 2 3 in this direction this is again your axial hydrogen right now this axial hydrogen and this methyl it is called 1 3 diaxial interaction similarly if you go in the another direction 1 2 3 then this particular axial not this one actually the other one so first you see through the model just like this say uh, this is the chair conformer right you can see here so this is the methyl group which is the bulky one now moving to this one 1 2 or 3 so this hydrogen is a so 1, 2, 3. This is 1, 3 diaxial interaction. Now moving to in this particular direction. 1, 2, 3. So this again a 1, 3 diaxial interaction. So how many diaxial interactions are there? There are two 1, 3 diaxial interactions. Methyl hydrogen diaxial, methyl hydrogen diaxial interaction. So two 1, 3 uh, diaxial interactions are there in this particular form. So if you see this was your CH3 now again this is going down so this would go up and you see this is the actually the hydrogen just like this right so that means there would be interaction between these two and there would be interaction would be between these two now if you calculate the energy of these two then you can easily calculate for chair C uh, if for 1, 3 methyl hydrogen diaxial 
interaction it cost 0.9 kilocalorie per mole right so we have two this kind of interactions so for two you see two into 0.9 that is 1.8 kilocalorie per mole so that means if you introduce the methyl group in any one of the axial position this will give you 213 di uh, axial interaction and which cost 1.8 kilocalorie per mole of the energy to the molecule and remember cyclohexane chair right this chair is having how much of energy if you remember that there were six gauss butane unit in the chair conformer right uh, i have uh, i have shown all these thing in my uh, previous lecture so if you haven't seen my the previous lecture on cyclohexane so here is the link to go and watch how we can see how uh, 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 how many uh, gauss butane units are there in the cyclohexane chair so for 6 and 6 into 0.9 that is 5.4 right so uh, this energy plus this energy you see total energy that would be equal to 5.4 plus 1.8 that is 2.7 kilo calorie per mole that mean this molecule is associated with uh, with this much of uh, this much of energy now again you see uh, this was your chair methyl was axial now you can very easily flip this molecule very easily flip this molecule right by flipping this what you can do it will come up and this will go down right and you know when you flip the molecule or flip the one chair into the another chair then your axial substituent would become equatorial and equatorial substituent would become axial so this methyl in the previous case was axial now it is equatorial how we can draw this on the paper you can see like right, uh, this uh, if you put this half cap on the particular arrow then it shows a flip this is the flipping arrow actually so now you can flip it how see this is the parallel line you can see here uh, there is another parallel line to this one right and you can see again a parallel line and these two are parallel and you can join them just like this so you can have another chair now during flipping as you know this one would go down and four would go up so this would be your carbon number 4 and this would be your carbon number 2 rest will shift their position so this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 this one is 5 and this one is 6 now this was the methyl group which was axial but it was beta also see here it is beta so now it would become the equatorial one so the methyl would go in this way that is ch3 so this is now equatorial and again it is beta uh, recall as uh, i have explained in the previous lectures during flipping axial substituent become equatorial and equatorial becomes axial but alpha remains alpha and beta remains beta so this is the hydrogen just like this you can see right and rest you can do by yourself now if you see this is actually equatorial hydrogen and if you see here right uh this hydrogen is up you see axial this hydrogen is down axial this hydrogen is up axial this hydrogen is down axial right and this hydrogen is up axial rest would be say would be below the plane right and again you see this would be below the plane this would be above the plane right this would be below the plane and again this would be above the plane right now if you count here 1 2 3 so this is hydrogen now 1 2 3 this is another hydrogen so axial hydrogens are there 
बट दिस मिथाइल इज नॉट एक्सेल एक्चुअली बट दिस इज एक्चुअली एंटी टू दिस बॉन्ड सो दिस एंड दिस मिथाइल दिस एंड दिस दिस इज एंटी दिस इज एंटी राइट सो इफ इट इज एंटी दैट मीन इट इज नॉट एसोसिएटेड विद एनी काइंड ऑफ एनर्जी इट विल फॉर्म only six gauss butane unit that means six gauss butane unit that will cost 6 into 0.9 that is 5.4 kilo calorie per mole right so it is associated with the high energy it is associated with the low energy that is the equatorial position that mean the mono methyl substitution on cyclohexane most of the time the cyclo methyl cyclohexane would spend its time in equatorial conformer that is it is the most stable one and what is the difference you see the energy difference you see the energy difference that is 7.2 minus 5.4 this would be somewhere around you see 8 1.8 kilo calorie per mole that mean your hcl methyl would have this 1.8 kcal per mole of more energy than the equatorial one so this is how we can draw the methyl cyclohexane mono substituted methyl cyclohexane so uh, if you uh, like it uh, like the explanation explanation and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe the tetrahedron chemistry classes and don't forget to press the bell icon for the latest notifications thank you